So very good morning to all of you. Today, we are again back with uh, BTEC fifth semester paper named Human Resource Management and the paper code OEEST 506C. And today, we are going to discuss about collective bargaining. Collective bargaining is a part of the chapter number four of this paper that is Human Resource Management, right? So let us start. So what are the topics we are going to cover in this session? That is the meaning and definition of collective bargaining, objective and the importance of collective bargaining, process of collective bargaining, and the effective condition for conducting and collective bargaining. So these are the majorly four topics we are going to cover today. So what is the meaning and the definitions of collective bargaining? A process of negotiations between the employers and a group of employees, maybe a union in that reaching agreement that regulate working conditions simple concept employer employee employer representation or the representative and group of employees that may be a union they will be sitting together and discussing about different aspects of the working conditions when both the parties will agree they will be signing the document that they are both the parties are agreeing with that particular agreement so that is called collective agreement collectively they are taking agreement they are can you know getting into an agreement so that is why it is called collective bargaining so who are the parties employer and the employee employer and the employee representative so group of employees or maybe an union collective bargaining we are trying to redefine what is that collective bargaining Collective bargaining is the term used to describe a situation in which the essential conditions of the employment are determined by the bargaining process undertaken by the representatives of a group of workers on the one hand and on the other hand, one or more employers. Right? So, same concept. Employer, employee. Employee representative, employer representative sitting together discussing major important issues related to working conditions and a decision a consensus will be taken a decision will be taken both the parties will be agreeing and both the parties will be signing and both the parties will be abide by those rules for a stipulated period of time so that is the concept of collective bargaining so what are the features features definitely it's a collective process number one Okay, it is not an individual process. It's a collective process. Next is a continuous process. It is not the fact that we have a, we have taken a decision uh, and that will that decision will continue years after years. It may not because it's based on the situation. Okay, based on the situation, based on the different uh, econo economic uh, parameters, uh, political parameter, technological parameter. So this, if this the factor changes. So there would be changes in the working conditions as well. So then the, then the both the parties again have to sit together and discuss, right? And come to a uh, decision. So that's why it's a called continuous. Next one is flexible and dynamic process. It, it, it is not hard and fast rule that, yes, in the collective bargaining process, we have taken the decision. So that means if it harming uh, the company, if it is harming the employee till we need to continue with the decision because we have taken in the collective, uh, collective bargaining process. It is not that. It should be flexible. It should be dynamic in nature. We may have to sit together again to change the decision, right? So that's the thing. So that is called the flexible and the dynamic process. And the next one is that definitely it is a part partnership that it is a part of the workers participation management process, right? So that is the concept of the features of the collective bargaining process. So most important features are it is a collective process. Number two is a continuous process. Number three is a flexible and dynamic process. And number four is partnership, right? Now we'll be discussing about the importance of the collective bargaining. So importance of the collective bargaining has been designed, uh, divided into two parts, importance to the employees and importance to the employers, right? So first we'll be discussing about importance to the employees, right? So what are the importance uh, point? Like number one, collective bargaining develop a sense of self-respect and responsibility among the employees because the employees can see that they can or their representative can participate in the decision making process that whatever the decision is being taken by the company uh, regarding the working conditions and other things and they are also a part of it i mean they are taking so that's why their self respect is being improved their responsibility is being increased number 2 it increases the strength of the workforce thereby increasing their bargaining capacity as a group right so we are recognizing that you can bargain 
it is not that whatever the things uh, i mean uh, the told by the management you have to accept you have the bargaining power next one collective bargaining increases the moral and the productivity of the employee same method i mean if they are feeling responsible connected automatically their moral and the motivation would be improved and the productivity of of course would be improved because the motivated employees are productive employees right uh, so next one is the effective collective bargaining machinery strengthen the trade union movement because uh, collective bargaining is one of the important tool uh, in the hand of the trade union so if there is a collective bargaining process so definitely the functioning of the trade union will also be improved so these are the importance to what the employees i mean importance of collective bargaining towards the employees now let us check what are the uh, importance uh, towards the employers um, number one it becomes easier for the management to uh, resolve issues at the bargaining level uh, rather than taking up complaints of the individual worker okay so we are not taking up uh, uh, the complaints at the individual level we are discussing at a uh, group level right so that is helpful for the employer as well collective bargaining tends to promote a sense of job security among employees and thereby tends to reduce the cost of labor turnover to the management i mean employee turnover the labor turnover would be reduced so that is going to be helpful for the organizations uh, next one is the collective bargaining opens up the channel of communication between the workers and the management and increases the worker participation in the decision making so workers participation management is an important area so collective bargaining is a tool for workers participation next one is the collective bargaining plays a very high, vital role in setting and preventing industrial dispute if you can remember we have discussed in our last chapter about the industrial dispute uh, so in our, one of the you know major tool in handling or preventing the industrial dispute is a collective bargaining because whenever the employees and the employer both sitting together and taking a decision so there are less chances of conflict and if there is a less chances of conflict then then definitely the industrial dispute will be less right so it is going to help in uh, preventing the industrial disputes right so these are the uh, you know importance of collective bargaining towards the employers now we'll be discussing about the types of bargaining so there are a lot of bargaining so we'll be discussing mainly four types you know the generally the, the collective bargaining are of four types what is number one is the distributive bargaining what is distributive bargaining under it the economic issues like the wages the salaries the bonus are discussed okay in distributive bargaining one party gain and another party lose there is a win lose situation i mean say for example we are discussing about the wages and the employees are demanding for a raise in the pay by 10% and the employers don't want to give more than 5% but if there is in the bargaining process ultimately the employers representative own own uh, the bargain and ultimately the employee employer have to give a uh, 10% increment so definitely it is a win lose i mean the employer wanted to give 5% but at the end they have to agree with the employees to give actually 10% so that means it is a win lose situation so so financial things economic things like wages salary bonus are being uh, discussed in this kind of bargaining this is called distributive bargaining next one is the integrative bargaining what is that this involve negotiation of an issue on which both the parties may gain or at least neither party loses okay integrative uh, you can say kind of productivity bargaining also integrative or the integrated or integrative bargaining like say for example uh, the you know employees or the laborers want to raise their salary okay management said that yes we are ready to raise the salary but uh, you know you need to increase the production rate because the management knows that if the production rate increases because there is a demand in the market so their sales should be increased so per um, you know unit profit would be increased and automatically the overall profitability will be increased so there is no harm in giving the extra salary so employees are also getting they are getting extra salary companies are also getting because they are getting more production and more sales more profit right that is called integrative bargaining next one attitudinal restructuring this involves shaping and reshaping of some attitudes like trust or distrust friendliness or the hostility between the labor and the management maybe sometime uh, you know there is a hostility between the management and the uh, uh, management and the union and the employees representative and the employee there is a uh, uh, culture or there is an environment of mistrust kind of that is going on nobody is trusting each other so that is ultimately hampering the overall production process overall uh, you know productivity of the organization 
So that is the reason that you know both the parties are sitting together to shape and the reshape of this kind of characteristic. So that is why it is called attitudinal restructuring, right? So next one is the intra-organizational bargaining. So what is that? It generally aims at resolving internal conflicts. Okay, this type of uh, you know process is to achieve the consensus within the worker and the management even within the union there may be differences between the groups so if so there must not be any uh, intra organizational uh, conflict you know disparity in the opinion so that's why all the parties should sit together and resolve it so that is called intra organizational bargaining so we have understood four different kinds of Bargaining. What are those? Number one, distributive bargaining. Number two, integrative bargaining. Number three, attitudinal restructuring. And number four, intra-organizational bargaining. Now we'll be discussing about uh, you know conditions for or the prerequisite for collective bargaining. Okay, number one, very important is the recognition of the bargaining uh, agent. Okay, bargaining agent. And that is a union actually, right? So we have to recognize them. Next one, deciding the level of bargaining. That means whether the dealing are confined to the enterprise level, industry level, or the national level. So that we'll be discussing at the beginning. So that is what the level of the bargaining. We'll be deciding beforehand. I mean, before entering into the debate or entering into the bargaining process. Next one is the determining the scope and the coverage or the bargaining. What are the things we are going to discuss in this meeting that should be decided, pre-decided. So that is going to helpful. Otherwise, again, that will be creating a lot of issues in the meeting or the bargaining process. Okay. So next one is the uh, some other points like the trade union recognition should be there that we have already discussed. Uh, observance of the agreement. If there is an agreement, earlier agreement, we uh, both the parties should agree uh, to that. Uh, I mean, observe that all the rules, regulation, policies, support of the labor administration authorities. We need that. Uh, and there should be good faith. Otherwise, you know, if we are, have a uh, culture and the environment of the mistrust or the distrust, and that there is no faith, then what will happen? You know, that discussion will not be effective. So there must be a good faith that, yes, the discussion can get into a positive note that both the parties are having some good intentions. Okay. Next one is the proper internal communication must be there that uh, when, where, how, who are the person who would be involved in the meeting. Everything should be discussed and everything should be transparent in nature, right? Uh, so that's all for about this collective bargaining. So the collective bargaining is a part of your what number, chapter number four uh, of your human resource management paper. So that uh, all the you know pertinent areas as per your syllabus we have discussed. So if you have any question, please feel free to ask me uh, in the forum that has been given to you. We'll be again coming back uh, soon with the, the you know more topics uh, on this particular chapter there are two more topics left so we are going to discuss uh, we are going to take th those two sessions very shortly till then go through the earlier sessions and uh, if you have any question please feel free to ask me